because they're about the same age, same point in their development. But we can see on an individual basis how they differ. So over here on the right, we have Milo. Milo is a little bit bigger, and you can tell that Milo has a more broad coloration with just a couple spots here and there. And then Monty's over here on the left. He's a little bit uh, smaller, and his spots are more confetti-like. He has a lot of spots, and they're very small. This is totally normal for each harbor seal because their coat is going to be as unique to them as our fingerprints. Milo is at an excellent angle right here too to show off his side to you guys. And you guys might notice that his flippers have claws on them and his back flippers do as well. This is something that the sea lion does not have. The California sea lion does not have any claws on their front flippers, which is one of the ways that these guys are going to differ. Now out in the wild, the harbor seal, you can find them on both the east and west coasts of North America, so their range will overlap a little bit with the California sea lion, as well as some parts of Northern Europe and East Asia. So these guys are a very widespread species. Now, why do we do training with our animals? It's not just for fun. These aren't tricks, these aren't shows. Uh, to participate in their own health care. So these very basic uh, cues like this, these very basic uh, behaviors that we can teach the animals, like lying down or offering their flipper or rolling over, it allows us to do a visual checkup on the animal. So daily, the keepers can go in and make sure that the animals are feeling good, there's no abrasions, there's no soreness anywhere. And then when it does come time for those vet visits, having your friend there with you to direct you to do exactly what you need to do for the vet makes the whole thing a lot less scary because these guys hate going to the vet just as much as your pets at home. Now you can see here we're desensitizing Monty to touch over here on the left. You may notice too, as the harbor seals, oh, now they're going into the water. But you may have noticed how the harbor seals seem to be winking their nostrils. That is a adaption that the harbor seals have where they can close their nostrils to not allow any water into their airways as they are diving. Now between the California sea lion and the harbor seal, who do you think can dive deeper into the ocean? I'd like to see your left flipper right up here if you think the harbor seal can dive deeper, and your right flipper if you think the California sea lion is going to dive deeper. Yeah. All right, so let's see here. One, two, three. Some very interesting answers. So the harbor, harbor seal will actually be able to dive deeper than the California sea lion. These guys can go up to feet, can go as deep as 1,500 feet in the ocean. The California sea lion, though, can only go as deep as 900 feet. Only 900 feet, California sea lion. These guys can hold their breath for about 30 minutes, and they will actually use that adaption in closing up their nostrils to be able to take naps underwater. While these sea lions are going to hold their breath for about 20 minutes as they are diving. Most of these guys, though, are female sea lions. So in the meantime, do we have any questions from anybody? our animals all the food that they need, even though, once again, these guys are the Labradors of the sea. So they really would eat an entire ocean's worth of fish if we let them. All right, so we have three individual uh, females up here today. We have Gemini. We will have Gemini up here on the front rock when she comes by. We're going to have Nova in that middle rock right there. And then on the back, we have Elvira. Elvira is named that because she was born in October, which is not common for sea lions. So she was named after the Mistress of the Dark. Gemini here is our oldest sea lion, well, our oldest female sea lion that we have here. She's about 13 years old. And she's actually the mother to two of the other sea lions here in this enclosure. Sea lions are very vocal animals because they are very social animals. If you guys have ever gone to the Pacific coast of North America, gone on to those docks or any of those rocky uh, islands there, you will see that these guys love to get up on those docks and islands, just beach themselves, sun themselves, and talk with each other. These guys are very, very talkative. When it comes time for a mother uh, to have her pup, she will go out to the ocean to hunt for her pup, and when she comes back to give the pup the food, they will be able to tell each other apart on those beaches 
just by their barks alone. Like the name suggests, the California sea lion does live, uh, does live off the coast of California, but they live all across the North American Pacific coast. You can find them as high up as Canada and as far down as Mexico. So that absolutely beautiful display we saw in the back from Elvira, that is porpoising. Porpoising is a behavior that a lot of ocean animals do, like penguins and dolphins, and they will jump up out of the water and jump right back in in order to gain speed. They will do this to both catch their prey and avoid predators. And what prey does the sea lion like? So, out in the wild, these guys will eat just about anything they can fit their mouth around. You might see, as Gemini's up here, she might display her really wide open mouth. So you can see just how big a sea lion's mouth is. They will use that incredibly large mouth in order to uh, eat crustaceans, squid, octopus, and fish. These guys are unable to chew, so they have to have a wide mouth in order to get their food into their bellies. Is they will go up to a bunch of kelp out in that kelp forest, and they will actually blow bubbles into those leaves. And those bubbles help to flush out any fish that might be hiding in there. All right, so it looks like we are going to be bringing out our boys here in just a moment, our last round. So these guys are very smart, and they are about as trainable and smart as a dog. So it does depend on the individual, but it doesn't take as long as for other animals. How do they jump? All right, so we're going to begin our final round here in just a moment. Here we have one of our females up on the rock, even though we want one of our males up here. It's not like she didn't just get fed or anything. Here at the zoo, they will receive a lot of herring, mackerel, and capelin, sardines as well. We give them a wide variety of fish so that these guys, even if a certain variety becomes unavailable out in the wild, they're always going to have a complete diet. So remember how I said these guys are all family? All right, so up front we have our youngest male, Fluke. He's about three years old. And there in the back we have Raiden, who is about five. Already uh, you can see some of the differences in size between these guys. Fluke is already larger than all of his female relatives. And he's also a lot darker. The male sea lions will be a lot darker than the females. They'll be a deep chocolatey color, while the females are going to be sort of blondy. They will also absolutely outweigh the females. The females are going to come in about 200 pounds, while the males are going to come in when they're full grown anywhere from 600 to 800 pounds. So you guys did hear, uh, hear, hear me say earlier, we do give these guys a wide variety of fish, about four different types for their daily diet. But they do get some special treat fish every now and then too. They do enjoy a nice salmon every now and again. And all of the fish that we give them is human grade. So you could take a fish out of that bucket, cook it, and eat it yourself. But even though these guys have very consistent access to food and have a, always have a really great wide variety of food, that isn't always true for their wild counterparts. That is because a lot of the prey, prey species, a lot of the prey fish that sea lions would be hunting in the wild are unfortunately overfished. And this is true for predators and fish all across the, all across the ocean. Humans will come in and unfortunately overfish certain species of fish, which leads those uh, numbers out in the wild. So these guys can't be able to, aren't able to hunt as many. But how can we help these guys out in the wild? So, just by coming here today, you guys are already helping their wild counterparts because profits from your purchases do go to conservation efforts that the zoo is partnered with. But there is also a website online called seafoodwatch.org. It is a website created by the Monterey Bay Aquarium, and on it you're able to actually look up your favorite species of fish. 
So you're able to look up and see how sustainable the fish that you're eating is. Each fish that you look up will be given a letter grade based on the sustainability. So if perhaps a fish that you like to eat turns out to not be very sustainable, you know, the people who are harvesting, out, harvesting it out in the wild aren't doing it in a good way, you could make a decision to remove that fish from your diet in order to give these guys more fish out in the wild. So that is one of the ways you yourself are able to directly help these guys. Reducing your own pollution, especially plastic pollution from single-use plastics, also very much helps these guys because even though we live in the middle of the United States, everything still goes back to the ocean. Rain will still bring pollution and pesticides back to the ocean. And there's still plenty of waterways here in Nebraska that we want to protect too. All right, so it looks like we have reached the end of our training session today. I want to give you guys a uh, big thank you for coming out. And if you guys want to give the keepers a hand as well for their awesome demonstration.